I'm proud to be an American Where at least I know I'm free And I won't forget the men who died Who gave that right to me And I gladly stand up next to you And defend her still today Cause there ain't no doubt I love this Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another edition of the Volpe Report. I'm your host, Dominic Volpe, and tonight our special guest is Jeannie Blum, uh, the executive director of the, well, we'll call it CHOP, which is the Caring of Homeless for Peekskill, mm -hmm. and also the director for the Jam Peak House. So welcome, Jeannie, to the show. Hey, uh, thanks, Dominic, for having me. There you go. Yeah. Well, well, let's start out with explain to our viewers what exactly is CHOP. Okay, CHOP is a not-for-profit organization that was formed in 1988. And for those viewers out there, CHOP stands for Caring for the Homeless of Peekskill. And uh, we were formed in 1988, so we just uh, passed our 20th anniversary. Uh, we, we have three programs. We started out as the Jan Peak House. Um, that's our first you know, main major program. The Jan Peak House is a homeless shelter that houses um, single, homeless, male and female adult individuals. Right. We've been around f for 20 years. Um, we also uh, recently have started another program called the Sunny Donut Free Breakfast Program that started in 2000. And that program serves over 600 breakfasts each month to anybody um, in, who, is, who needs a good, healthy start to the day, a good okay. breakfast. Um, and we also are, are starting a food pantry, which we really want to push this really big effort to do a choice food pantry, very structured, and um, with a regular distribution in the city of Peekskill, which does not exist currently. Sure, because right now I think the closest one is actually in Putnam Valley, I believe there's one that we've heard of. Mm -hmm. And But really there is a and the, and the, the fact is that there is a need for one right now because of economic times or whatever the case may be where families or individuals are, you know, uh, are in need of this right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. In <laughs> fact, we've seen like a 40% increase in the number of people who are accessing not only our breakfast program, but also our food pantry. We have, an, we have an emergency food pantry right now. So if you're in distress and you need food, um, you can come to me and, and we'll give you some groceries to take home so that you can feed your family. Uh, there are several small emergency food pantries in the city of Peekskill. I would say there's a handful. But when I'm talking about the, this program that we really want to build is a very structured, large... On a, more on a regular more basis. Regular, versus on a like people would register right. to, um, part you know, to get food. Um, we would issue ID cards with your name on it and the number of uh, people in your family so uh. that we know how much food to give. Um, and, and this is a huge community-wide effort where I'm really calling upon support from everybody in the community, sure. from the business community, the civic um, organizations, and the faith-based communities to get everybody together on a committee to help us get this food pantry up and running. Sure, sure. Um, let's go back then. Let's start with, it, even though you said it's CHOP, which is the Caring for the Homeless of Peekskill, mm -hmm. it's not just Peekskill, though. You have residents that come from, let's say, Cortland or Yorktown or Ossining. It could be, it's really, even though it's centered in Peekskill, it really, it's collectively, you actually in the, the whole North County in a sense. It, absolutely. <clears throat> um, the Jan Peak House is um, the only homeless shelter in northern Westchester for single adult individuals. Um, and it's, we're called, the, the nonprofit that oversees the Jan Peak House is caring for the homeless of Peekskill, but you're right, it's not just Peekskill. Um, we do service all of the, the northern part of the county right. with our um, shelter services and with our hunger feeding programs. Right, right. And, well, let's get, to, then let's do this. How did you get involved with, with 
CHOP or the Jam Peak House. Um, Give us a little uh, bio of yourself. Okay, well, um, <clears throat> actually my dad was one of the original founding members of the Jam Peak House way back in 1988. So he would always bring home, you know, stories of all of these very interesting people that he ran into at the shelter, and it was kind of in our blood, you know. Um, then, uh, you know, I went along with my life and went on and so forth, and I started a company, a nonprofit, um, a marketing company that uh, really my clients were all not-for-profit organizations, and um, what, what we did was branding strategies and um, to, to get the word out for, you know, nonprofit organizations. And I wanted to really, I remembered the Jan Peak House was all the time. The it was always mind. in the back of my mind. <clears throat> and at one point I um, called uh, Rebecca Hawkins, who was the then executive director, and I said, hey, you know, here, I've got this marketing company, I want to do something, what can I do for you? And at that time she was just starting the Sunny Donut breakfast program. And um, well, actually, it was the breakfast program, and she said, I'm, I'm, "I need to uh, launch this breakfast program." So I said, "Okay, we'll market it." So we named it. We gave, we did all the PR for it, and op and you know, the rest was history. I sort of kept in contact with Jan Peak from then on. So how many years outside the Jan Peak House? How long has the breakfast program been underway? Since 2000. Since 2000. Yes. So the Jan Peak House came first. Jan Peak House came in 1988. 1988. And, and it went along for <clears throat> all those years. Um, the, the board of CHOP identified the need for a breakfast program in the city of Peekskill around 2000. Mm -hmm. um, there was a noontime feeding program. Um, and there, I think there was a dinner program, but there was nothing, uh, no breakfast program for people who were, um, you know, people who needed it, people who were sure. hungry. Sure. So um, they got behind it and made that effort happen, and now we've been running for eight years and feeding a lot of people. And then taking care of a lot of people. Now, yeah. let's go back to the facility itself. So how many, or let's put it this way, who can use the facility or how big is the facility? Give us the specs on, on Jan Peak House. On the Jan Peak House, okay. <clears throat> Um, there are 19 beds in the Jan Peak House for mm -hmm. my transitional shelter. By transitional shelter, I mean um, people who are referred to the Jan Peak House by the county. Mm -hmm. They're mandated to come there. They are mandated to follow their programs, um, to uh, work towards getting housing, to work towards getting employment, to work towards getting back on their feet. So this is not, there's a misnomer out there that these are just people that, you know, they went out drink on a drinking binge uh, for six hours and need a place to, you know, just get a little hot in a cot and then the next morning <laughs> they're gone. That's really not how Jam Peak st is structured at all. There really is a stigma of a, a, a surrounding the homeless issue and right. homeless people. Um, but really, homeless people are just like you and just like me. But, you know, they just are on down in their luck. Their circumstances have sent them to Jan Peak. Um, but the people who are there in the transitional shelter are working their program. They're working towards getting back on their feet and getting, you know, getting back into the mainstream of life. So it's not a question of just identifying who the people are naturally as they come recommended. It's also then setting up programs to further whatever need they need in order to get back up. Is that correct? So like, this is not, they could be there a week, a month, a year. Is there a time limit to this? Well, the average stay, if you will, is probably about six months. Um, it takes about that long to get somebody back you know, back to a, a stable place where they can move on. Sure. And I do have to say, though, uh, <laughs> the major problem with um, having people be homeless is that there is no affordable housing in the county of Westchester. Sure. There's just a lack, such a lack of um, home places to live that you can afford. Um, being that the county really if you are on public assistance um, and you're in the shelter system and you want to, you want, you don't, you don't want to be in a shelter. You right. want to have your own home. Of course. You want to have your own room, your own apartment. 
but the county will only pay, I think, $400, around $400 a month.